Hello and welcome back to another FL Studio tutorial. This one's all about how to slide notes, whether you're using a stock plugin, third-party plugin, or maybe you're not using MIDI at all and you're working from a sample. I'll show you how to slide your notes, whether that's a bass line or a lead melody. There's plenty of ways to do this. They're all quite simple, so let's just dive right in. This tutorial has been highly recommended after my last video where I played this beat and lots of people were asking about how I was sliding this bass line, so I'm just going to start with that. I'm going to play the beat and you can listen out for the way the bass line slides. It makes an otherwise very simple bass line just flow and be a little bit more smooth, just sound a little bit more groovy. So that's the method we're going to start with. This first method is all about using an automation clip to automate the pitch of the instrument that you're using, whether it's a third party or stock. This is sort of the most complicated one. There are a few more simple methods later on, but this one works for just about everything. So in my channel rack, I'm using this plugin here, which is Serum, and I'm using my Sinister Reese patch from my sample pack or sound bank. If you make sure that you have this green cog turned on so that you can access the pitch up here, this is what we're going to be automating. And this works in, in most third-party plugins and all the stock ones as well. Now this pitch dial here is actually automating the uh, pitch bend wheel down here inside Serum. So inside the synth you're using you may have to make sure that you've got the right number of semitones uh, selected down here, like 12 for a full octave. Now up at the top here, Often if you're doing like 808 glides, you might want a full octave range, but I only want three or four semitones. I find that I'm not doing these uh, little fills more than a few notes apart. So I'm just gonna select a range of three semitones for now. Now one semitone is just one piano key to the next. So a C to a C sharp, or a B to a C for instance. So I select this pitch range uh, and I just create an automation clip. That's a right click and then a left click to create the automation clip. Now if I go back onto my playlist, you'll see that this has been created. I'm just gonna cut it to length. That was a C to select the cut tool and a left click and drag. This automation clip is gonna be controlling the pitch dial up here. So if I drag the automation clip all the way to the top, we're going up three semitones all the way to the bottom is going to slide that note down three semitones from the note that we're currently on. On the first point here, what I'm gonna do is just copy a value, and uh, that's my 50%, that is dead in the middle. And then if I zoom in, now a quick tip for zooming in, if you press Control and use the mouse scroll wheel, you can zoom in like this, which I think really, really helps. With this point here copied, that's a right click, copy value, I'm going to right click at the start of each new note here just to create a new point on this automation clip. Then I'm going to right click on it again and paste that value in and this means that that point will be the correct pitch for that note. So no matter what bends I do it's going to return to the right value at the start of the next note. This is where you have to start using a little bit of music theory and deciding what you actually want your slides to do. My simple bass line is like this. Just three kind of boring notes, but what I'd quite like it to do is play something like this. Like a little trill in between. So if I pull this piano roll up, you can see that what I want it to do is go three semitones above the first note, then two semitones down. So that's an F to a G sharp, that's three up, and then an F down to a D sharp would be two down. So with this in mind, I'm going to try and make the same moves on my automation clip. And the reason I'm not just using this pattern at the bottom is because those don't slide, those just start at the pitch. I want that groovy slide there. Right click to create a new point, and then keep right clicking to create more, as many as I want. And I'm going to drag that first one up three semitones there. So I get that first slide. Now I'm going to press uh, right click to create a new point. Sometimes these can get a little bit fiddly, you have to sort of do that kind of thing, it's not always perfect. I'm going to change this one to a hold point, and although this isn't too precise, I'm going to drag this about two thirds the way down. I'm going to make this perfect in a minute. That's going to take me two notes down. Let's take a listen. And then I'd like this middle note to slide into that last note. So I'm just going to select a curve and just drag it down like this. Uh, now I'm going to again paste that value there, that's a right click, paste. 
So this note here slides down and then it snaps back up when this note starts again. So it just feels like a smooth transition into that note. This is going to be wildly different with whatever bass line or melody you're doing. But uh, get the bare bones of it down and then to make sure that it's perfect. See I've just done this one here by ear. But to guarantee that you've got a perfect pitch bend of two semitones down, go and grab the pitch wheel up here and then look at the top left hand corner of FL Studio. Press Control and then a left click and start adjusting this pitch dial. That's going to make it really, really smooth. And you can see that at the top you've got 100 cent or minus 100 and then you've, I'm going to move it all the way to minus 200 cent. So when I get there I just release and then I right click and copy that value. Now I go to my automation clip and I paste this value in and you can see that it moved a little bit because I wasn't quite pitch perfect. And now I can know for sure this note here is exactly two semitones down. It's perfect. And if I play that with the rest of my beat just to confirm that. Sounds pretty good to me. So that's the first method and that works on a variety of different plugins. Just a quick announcement, the winners from last week's giveaway are these three lucky people here. So I've got in contact with you, so just be checking your messages and your emails. I want to get you that copy of FL Studio and my sound bank as soon as possible. Thanks. However, it is possible that you're not using a plugin at all and you're simply using a sample. So for instance, I have this decap bass sample. It's just one note and it's a nice long sample. And lots of people use this and then pitch bend to create the bass melody that they want. So in this case, the first thing I do is go over to this secondary tab here, turn on the envelope and just uh, uh, lower the attack uh, increase the sustain and lower the release. The reason you may want to do this, it means that when you release a key, the bass stops playing. So just like this. Simple. I've prepared something in the playlist already here for this sample. So everything's muted uh, now and I'm just gonna open up this in the channel rack and I'll show you these really cool slide notes that FL Studio has. So I'm going to remove them and show you what these do. So you'll be very familiar with a typical green MIDI note like this. There's also this secondary type of slide note up here. So if you go to the top left hand corner, select this little triangle one, you now have notes uh, which are slide notes. And these work in all FL Studio stock plugins, I believe, and also if you're manipulating a sample. And it's an amazing, amazing tool that FL Studio has. These slide notes are pretty simple, but there's a few subtleties or tips and tricks to using them. Uh, you'll identify them by this little uh, triangle at the right-hand side. And the way they work is that the duration of the note dictates the duration of the slide. So this is going to slide now from a C to a G. But if I make it very, very short, it's going to start sliding here and it's already going to have reached the end, the G, by here. And then it will hold for as long as this original C plays. You hear that it slid up really fast. Now if I extend this G, it's going to take much longer to get there. If I just extend this C all the way out and I extend this, uh, this G slide note, it's now going to slide very slowly up to that G. And I think if you're working from a sample, this just gives you the most control. There's a few tips here. Say you want to slide it quickly up to a G and then back down to a C. Something you can do is just select your cut tool, left click and drag, and now it will, once it gets to the G there, it's just going to cut back down to the C. Just like this. It sounds a bit silly. It's quite a high note. Maybe it's just a D, D sharp there. Just going to do that and you can get these little cool pitch shifting effects. And of course these slide notes work going up in pitch as well as down in pitch. And in many ways this is easier than using an automation clip but sometimes it can get just as confusing as well. The downside of this technique is that it doesn't work with third-party plugins as far as I'm aware. Um, I haven't managed to make it work with any of those. It's just for FL Studio stock plugins and for working from samples. To demonstrate the effect on a stock plugin, I have Citrus here, which is an FL Studio stock plugin, playing this pad here. And what I would like to do is slide this pad down to that final note. So I'm just going to select a slide note, which again is up in this corner, 
and now it will slowly slide into that final A sharp. Which I just think sounds really cool. One of the reasons I think we like these slides so much is that they really sort of push and pull with our emotions in a song. They prevent a song being too static. It does depend on the genre though. And if you think about some of the most beautiful instruments, you know, sliding a note on a cello or a violin, sliding notes on guitar, it's just got that really human quality to it that uh, many synthesizers struggle to create without an awful lot of uh, programming. So I think it just keeps beats real, keeps them a little bit easy, and it's kind of ear candy in a way, breaks up a beat from being too boring. I do, however, have one last example just to kind of prove a point, and that's that you can do this on a typical wave file as well. So this is just a wave file here. Simple. So again, if I just double click, select the pitch bend here, create automation clip, you can, of course, just bend these up and down as well. And that's why I like using the uh, just standard pitch modulation up here. It works whether you're using WAV files, MIDI, third party, stock plugins. It just seems to work the same on everything. Therefore, you only need to learn one technique and it'll stay with you for your whole production career of using FL Studio. So that's really everything for this tutorial, but just remember you can apply this to anything, especially on vocal chops and leads. It just tends to bring them alive when a lead has really good pitch bending on it. it just really sounds very professional to me as long as it's done right. Make sure that when you're pitch bending, you know, you're staying in key and in tune with your song, of course. But hopefully this helps some of you out there and I hope you have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.